Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. Uh, today I have more in the series on the pastel, soft pastel chalks that um, Stampin' Up! released recently. And today I have two more techniques about how to use the chalks. So let's just get started. Last time um, we met, I made these cards and I did add some more yellow flowers on this one. Um, but these were using a nearly dry brush and I used my old aqua painter and dipped it in a little bit of water and then used um, some of the chalk powder and use this big block and you can see here I've put some of my chalk powder down on this and today so that was painting with with a little bit of water and the chalk and then brushing it off but that was the, what we did last time now this time I'm going to use a couple of these other color colors so I've taken to putting down some more of my chalk material here on my little uh, palette, if you will. So I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm using the spatula end of my Take Your Pick tool to get some material down on my block. Um, this piece is the Daffodil Delight and then this yellow in the chalk that I'm using here is one that they're calling Mango Melody. And you can see it's got a little different intensity in the yellows there. Not by much, but a little. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the purple. I'm going to add some more of this uh, Bermuda Bay and then lastly I used a bit of the blue and need to replace it on my palette here. So I'm going to take some of that chalk in there. Okay, now then I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques. Today we are going to, I'm going to leave my chalk out here and then I've got a damp baby wipe and I've got my alcohol uh, nearby so that I can clean up a bit in between. Um, so what I have prepared today is a handful of white, basic white cards that are three and three quarters by five because I have found that these work best when they're backed or layered with something behind it that is um, close to the actual uh, colors in the card that we're making. So I'm going to take this one today and I'm using my Butterfly Brilliance um, whole um, stamp set here or stamp that where everything is connected. I also have one where I cut it apart and um, uh, I won't be needing that today although I will end up showing you the card that I make using this technique. So what I'm doing right now is making sure I get plenty of my Memento Black down on this card and then I'm going to set that aside and what I'm going to do, I've got a piece of scratch paper here and I am going to lay this down right here on my stamp and then I'm going to use this um, scratch paper here to allow me to just rub in that image 
on the piece of card on the underside. So here we've got hopefully a pretty good image and you can see there I've gone outside of the ring so we'll be working on this side of the scratch paper and I've got my tweezers here to pick this up and there's my butterfly image isn't that pretty and um, so I'm going to take this and set it aside so what I want to show you today is using your blending tool and um, and this is pretty cool because the blending medium here since we've got this yellow down here I think I'll start with the yellow <laughs> and you can add your chalk to your image using the blending tool it's got that um, medium on the blending tool now what I did find in working with the blending tool is that the chalks have a tendency to build up on the brush and on your card so you want to use the the tool just as much as you want and I'm going to add a little bit down here so my so my butterfly is pretty symmetrical and you can see this is pretty direct without making any kind of a mess and so what I found was then it does build up on the edge of your blending tool so I needed to take that off and I'm going to go now into the purple and I'm going to place that purple here on the upper part of my wings of my butterfly and you can see that it's very dark when I first place it down and then it lightens up so if you want it dark then you would have to keep applying the chalk to get it to darken up and um, then if you if you wanted it lighter what you could do is kind of like we do with stamping off and then add it in a little lighter tone and just pick up little bits of it if you wanted it in a lighter tone but I've started this off pretty dark so I'm going to continue that and I'm just continuing to pick up some of that chalk and put it down right where I want it and this is a very unmessy process so I'm getting my um, chalk down. I'm going to pick up the excess there, take it off of my tool, and then maybe switch to this pretty poppy parade for the outside edges of my butterfly. So there we go. And you're, you know, you can um, add this stuff pretty much all over wherever it is you want and you can make each butterfly completely different and as dark or as light as you'd like to have it I'm adding a little bit more color to mine so the colors are a little bit more vibrant and then that will dry because it's a little bit damp uh, the medium is but there we go there's one of my butterflies kind of covered and I'm going to go in and do this dark purple here all the way on all parts of that wing and there we go so that is one now you can go through and finish this whole thing and then let it dry and you'll see here that um, I have gotten a tiny bit of that um, chalk outside of the line here I'm going to show you something kind of cool about chalk and I'm going to set that there and for the most part it erases um, and you can use that kind of an eraser you can use your um, your sand eraser 
if it doesn't get it off enough for you. And then if I pick that up, that's pretty well cleaned up. And the lighter your touch on the um, on the chalks, the more easily the eraser will pick it up. And you can erase anything on a chalk um, until it is fixed by using either the fixative that we talked about in the first uh, video or using hairspray. And um, in the next video, I will apply some and use the fixative, and I'll be using hairspray because I'm not, um, uh, by and large, I don't use fixative on it. There's not enough that comes off that makes a difference. As this dries, you can see, and it dries pretty fast, that isn't going to create a problem. So let me show you what it is I did with this once I colored the whole butterfly piece. For that technique, I ended up making this card. And so I went ahead and finished my coloring on all of my butterflies. And you can see here, even though some of that is fairly heavy on there, between the fixative and kind of brushing it off. And I've been using just a Kleenex to brush away and then cleaned up any little pieces in the middle by erasing. So that's what I did there. And love is what makes us family. So I used the stamp set that is called um, Lovely You and love is what makes us family. And then just kind of fussy cut the word out there and put that on there and embellished it with a little bit of rhinestones. Now, because this was stamped in black, I went ahead and put a black card base, four by five and a quarter. Then these panels are all three and three quarters by five. And then on the inside, I just put down one little butterfly and white and black to kind of bring the two together. So that is that technique um, that I used using the blends. Now, the next technique I want to show you, so let me grab another white base here and another piece or my other piece of scratch paper down here. And on this technique, you do get chalk kind of all over the place, so it does pay to have, um, and you'll see it leaves a little color stain. This little bottle that I've got is filled with alcohol, and I find that it cleans up, alcohol is magic, it cleans up just about everything, including any glue residue. And I don't want to get a different color chalk on my cards here so I'll be cleaning up a bit in between. Alright, so on this one I want to show you how to take the chalk directly to the paper. So I decided that I was going to use the Granny Apple Green and I'm going to just take my chalk here directly to my paper and I'll be using my little uh, piece of um, Kleenex there to get some of that off of there and I'm going to use this chalk a couple different places on this card base and it lays down a pretty vibrant color of the of the chalk and so there it is and I'm going to take all of that extra residue and kind of push it up towards the top here get it out of the way all right so there we have the chalk in the granny apple green and I'm going to go over it in a couple places because I want a pretty good sample of this color down. And, and then I'm just going to flick the back to get the excess off. Okay, next I'm going to take 
the Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to fill in, and from my point of view, it's perfectly all right to mix these two together. So I'm blending right into the other area there that's got the granny apple green. And I'm going to go right to the edge on a couple of these places and put some of this Bermuda Bay down and maybe a little bit along here. And then I'm going to put my Bermuda Bay down here like that and then see where else I need to put some more color. It's pretty intense color and I think it's it's pretty um, pretty interesting. Okay, so there we've got my Bermuda Bay. And then I'm going to use the Mango Melody because it looks to be a little deeper yellow. And I'm going to go between some of those spots and add that mango melody in between. Isn't that fun? I'm trying to leave a little room for another color and I'm going to put that yellow down here at the bottom. It's a pretty intense color and then I thought I might use this darker blue. And so I'm kind of going between and in the spots that are left here to put down. This color is Knight of Navy on the box. So I'm adding my chalks directly to my paper here and I can see here I've got a couple of white spots so I'm going to just take that all the way to the top for continuity. I've got little pieces here maybe a bit on the corner and I'm going to overlay some of the blue on here just because I want to get that blue in a couple more places than I really left room for. Okay, and now I'm going to take that color off and there you can see I've got my piece and I'm going to clean up my chalk again here. It's a never-ending battle. And I'm going to take this piece of um, Kleenex and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go over it and look what happens. It it takes some of the intensity away for some of the colors and softens them. And see what it does here? It just picks it all up off of it. Now I've got no medium on this to hold that color down. So in taking that off, now when I touch this, it comes off on my fingers a bit, but not by much. Now, if I wanted to de-intensify it more, I could take a damp cloth. This is a damp handy wipe, and I'm just gonna show you here what happens. It kind of blends the colors a little bit more and softens them even more if you take a little bit of dampness to what you've done and in some cases it intensifies the color and in others it um, it makes them a little bit more muted but there you can see it softened up the lines and I think that that makes a beautiful background so what can you do with this kind of a background well, I'll show you what I did with mine. Now, I'm going to save this because I think I can use some of that powder. 
um, but what I did was I took this particular card and here's what I did with it. I backed this on a piece of Bermuda Bay and then I ran this through my um, folder. I can't think of the name of it right now. The seashell folder that has all of those beautiful seashells. And see, I can just leave it like that. Or I could put some Versamark or some heat and stick powder and put some gold on there. There's a ton of things I can do. But what I decided to do was to build a little scene. So from this seascape, I used the dies from that, which are called surf, surf, seaside seashells um, dies. And I came up with this, which is a little bit of like coral. And what I'm going to do, I cut a little bit of this coral in the granny apple and then in the mossy meadow so that I could have two tone on it. And I'm going to add just some snail to the back of this coral. And I'm going to stick some of it right down here in the corner on my card. And then I have more coral that I've cut. Actually, I've cut several pieces of it here in the mossy meadow and in the um, granny apple. And I'm going to cut this little piece of coral so that I can stick it underneath here and have it be add another color to and there's no reason that some of this coral can't stick out from one place and go underneath it on the other and build up a little bit of that scene. Also from this same die set here, I cut this little fish. Um, it's like a goldfish, fancy goldfish. And then I cut these two little fishes. And what I did was I put a little bit of Versamark on the edges of her fins. And then I used a little bit of the Poppy Parade with a, with a dauber to add a little bit of color. And what I've done is I have a whole group of daubers and I'm keeping them separate in a separate little box here so that they are um, don't get confused in the ink. And I just added a little bit of color to my fish um, and to make it a little bit more interesting. And like I said, that's got um, a bit of Versamark on it. So I want to clean that up there. But I have this pretty little fish and I thought it would be kind of fun. So I'm going to add a little bit of snail to the back of my fish. And I'm going to set that down right here as though this were a water uh, scene. And there is my fish. And then I've got these two little fish and some more of this greenery. So I'm going to um, cut this greenery a bit and add some more of it to across the bottom here of my card. Maybe kind of sticking out this way. And so I'm going to cut this piece down and oh just chop all of this up so that I get the two tones that I'm looking for on here. And these have little cutouts on them so that you could raise them if you wanted to to get a little bit more dimension but frankly they look like they have quite a bit of dimension 
just the way they are. So I'm going to stick this little piece in there. Underneath and then maybe one more little piece of this granny apple out a bit from this little corner down here. And then I've got my two little fish and I thought I could have one of them swimming down here inside the coral. And the fish is a little bit articulated. Its little fins also can stand out if you want them to. And I'm going to put this little fish right in here and then I have one more that I thought I would set here. Um, now let's see, where do I want him? Hmm. Maybe a bit behind that fish. There we go. So I've got my two fish and we have room for a little sentiment there and I thought maybe we could use I love this stamp set it's got heartfelt wildly grateful just because always smile and I use that smile one quite a bit um, and I've got it right here and I thought that might be kind of fun because this is kind of a whimsical card and I'm going to take a little tiny piece of the Bermuda Bay and I'm going to put my image or my sentiment on it. And I'm going to do that in Bermuda Bay. So in keeping with the same theme. So I'm going to take my smile in Bermuda Bay here and I'm going to put it right up here towards the top. Isn't that cute? And then I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to use my trimmer and cut that out. Okay, so here I've got my little smile and I thought we could put that one right in here. And then in these um, uh, are artistry blooms sequence we have these almost clear sequins and I thought those would be great fun to just dot around almost like bubbles on the card There we go. That is the card front and we would just put this on a card base. So I've got a little white card base here and I've done all of this using standard A2, so eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And I've squared up my corner here and then started my burnishing. And I'm going to finish that burnishing. And then we're going to take this card front and put it on the front of here. And doesn't that make a pretty little card? I think that's just so much fun. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And then I will add a piece of Bermuda Bay and white with maybe a few fish um, and maybe a little bit of coral since I have little pieces left here on the inside of this card. But isn't that pretty? And so that's part of what you can do with this piece here. So that is uh, another of the techniques. Some of what else I've done. Now, there is a difference if you use your chalks with something lighter. 
So I've got my same, my three by five and a quarter, three by three and three quarters by five piece here. And this time I'm going to blend those same colors, but I'm going to use a blending brush. And I've got a little bit of the, well, let's see, I'm going to need a little bit more of the Granny Apple Green down here. And all I'm doing is scraping that color off of the piece of chalk. So there we go. And now I'm going to pick up a bit of it with my blending brush. And I'm going to blend those same colors together. And you're going to see that doing it this way, you see, and uh, I'm going to pick up some more of that color um, and pick it up from here, not trying to waste a, a dollop of it. And I'm going to use those same colors, but I'm going to use this blending brush to add the color. You can already see the difference of how soft that is compared to using chalk directly to the card front, even though that was dampened to make it a little less uh, intense. So next I'm going to use, um, I think my blue brush here to pick up this little bit of um, Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to put some pretty intense color here. Now I've done nothing again. This is just the chalk against the white card. So there we go. We've got that down there. And I want to take my green back again and fill in some spots to get a little bit more intensity of the color. But it's never going to be as intense um, because I'm using this blending brush in instead. And so I'm going to pick up some more of that Bermuda Bay. And then I'm also going to pick up the blue using this same brush and putting some of that blue here on my card front. And then the last color that I used was the yellow or the mango. And you can see it kind of blends with that granny apple. You really have to put that color down intensely in order to get it to, to show perhaps the way you want. So I'm going to add some down here in this corner. Now I'm going to just get rid of some of that chalk from there. But isn't that pretty? And it's just so soft. And I'm going to add a little bit of that blue right up here. And this chalk is um, additive and it, it does go over and change the color of some of the material. So there we go. I'm going to brush some of that away. Now I'm going to use my dry Kleenex and I'm going to go over the top of this and move away any excess. And you see the difference on this one where the color is so much more subtle. And so on this one, I have a soft so saffron yellow background. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this one. Clean up my chalk. And I'm going to place this on this background. There we go. And this background is just slightly different. I did this one and I put a granny apple green on the back of it. Okay, so what I've done is 
back these two in different colors and then I have cut out um, my uh, from that same Sea Life dies um, from the Seascape bundle I have uh, this pretty little seahorse and these are uh, all of these fish and everything are cut out of um, a little bit of the soft papaya and uh, so I'm going to take these and put them here and I'm going to use my Versamark pad. This is part of another technique which we'll look at in more detail in the next video and I'm just going to add a little bit of Versamark around the fish and then around some of the spines of the um, seahorse and let's see I think what I'm going to do is just kind of catch the edges of his spine down his tail a little bit across his body here and maybe a bit right there and then I'm going to use my dauber that I've been using with the um, poppy parade to add a little bit of this poppy parade color to my little sea animals here to get them a little bit more interest. This, this is exactly what I did to that uh, goldfish because I thought the um, soft papaya looked a little bit like gold particularly when you put some of this poppy parade on it so there I've got those animals with a little bit of that poppy parade and that is sticking to there because of the Versamark so I've got those animals ready and we just have to decide which of these panels we want to put this on but I'm thinking um, I still have a little bit of this coral and so maybe what we'll do is attach it to this one this one might be kind of fun to put some flowers on and I'll probably do that off camera between this and the next video so you can see a completely different look but right now I'm going to just add a little bit of this coral to my card base and mix this up a little bit and there's also some coral stamps in this stamp set that might be kind of interesting to look at as well and put this up along in here and then put our seahorse right in here and I'm just going to add a bit of snail to the back of him I think he'd be kind of tough to put up on dimensionals and run him up over here and then I've got my two fish which I'm going to put right in here and you could do a whole school of fish that might be kind of fun to put that up there and then we've got a little place for a greeting right around here and I'm going to take a little piece of that granny apple. I've got a little bit of a um, scrap here of the granny apple and I think on this one we're going to put um, just because and I think I'm going to do that in mossy meadow. So let's see I've got my just because right here and I'm going to add that in the mossy meadow right up here on my granny apple and I'm going to trim that down off camera 
and I'm going to put that on some dimensionals and I have some minis here I don't know what I did with my big ones right now but these will work on my card and there we've got another pretty card front for our collection and I've got another card base here and I'm going to anchor my corner here and come straight across and start that and then grab my bone folder and burnish my card front then I'm going to add and I'm going to put this on my card front and there we go. We've got another completed card using this chalk background. And that's not going to come off any more than that. I've already wiped it off so that I don't get any more residue off of that. And that is crying out for some green. And I have these beautiful... Um, 2021 20, 23 rhinestones and I'm going to put these on this is the soft succulent ones that I'm adding to here and I'm just going to set that around and I've got a couple of the evening evergreen ones that I'm also going to add and just set these around on the card for a little bling. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? So there we have another card using the chalk. So in the next, um, in the series, I'm going to finish up with adding some of this chalk both to make backgrounds um, and to um, color images at using Versamark and other mediums. So let's review here. These are the two original ones where we painted the color in with a little bit of water. Then we have today these images where we made backgrounds and then either this one I then um, used a, an embossing folder on to create um, texture in the background and then added some other elements here and I also did the butterfly card so let me grab that one so direct coloring with water, uh, direct chalk to card, uh, blending brushes, and a blender pen. So there's three more techniques, three techniques in total, or four I guess it is, so far using the chalks. Uh, let's see, this is July, and my prize draw for the month of July is the Grape vine bundle and uh, you get yourself in my drawing by putting an order of any size on my store albedinger.stampinup.net or you can get to it through inkandingenuity.com which is my blog so thanks again for stopping by and i'll be back soon with the next in this series bye